Hello there and welcome to a new episode of our Silent Hunter 3 campaign where we play as U55 with the One Alex Mod Edition. If you have watched the previous episode, you will know what happened previously. We have attacked a small Greek freighter somewhere behind us with our deck gun and we have sunk it. Our plan was to lure away an escort that is protecting two freighters. I did not see any trace of that escort, so I have to assume that it is still protecting its charges somewhere in front of us. By the way, yes, it is very dark and um, yeah, I will totally brighten up the video, otherwise you won't be able to see anything. So the video will be brightened, what you see is not what I see. I have a much harder time seeing anything. But I see that there is the freighter, the big one, that we had watched previously. And when I went for that small Greek freighter, I had taken the opportunity to mark the course of this little convoy. So I know that that ship is most likely somewhere on this line. This gives me an opportunity. I can plot its course. And let's go ahead and do just that. I have the user on the bridge. I will point it at our target, which is... there. Right there. Yes. And we will start the clock. Right... Oh, let me see which mast will I focus on, the middle mast. And start the clock. Note our own position at that moment and then weapons officer I need you you need to tell me precisely what I need to draw on the map so I need to draw 208 or 7.5 207.5 degrees from this position come on there we go oh wait what am I saying uh, I need to draw 30... no, 28. 28. There we go, that's over here. Let's do it like this. So the target at that point was right here, at this point. Most likely, if it hasn't changed course in the meantime. Let's place a mark there. And after 3 minutes and 15 we will take another measurement. We'll take another one after six and a half minutes. And that should already give us a pretty good indication of the target's speed. Once we have course and speed, everything is set for our grand engagement. Let me see if I can spot the escort. We have that target there. I see the other freighter here. There is a shadow in the darkness over there. It must be the escort. Yeah, it's still with them. Damn it, my plan did not work. It could have. But it didn't this time. Now what we are left to do is to just go and take out this thing. I think I will limit my attack uh, on a big ship. Receive the radio message. Let's have a quick look at that. Just a position report from another boat. I will limit my attack on this freighter. It is the bigger of the two and is the furthest away from the escort. So two criteria that make it a very enticing target. They are quite fast though. They are really hauling. I am burning a lot of fuel for this uh, whole engagement, but it's worth it. It's totally worth it. Okay, we are coming up to three minutes. Let's prepare ourselves for the next bearing that we are going to take. The nice thing if you plot the target and if you know um, its course and position you can just keep plotting away, it doesn't really matter where you are. 
I can change my course and that's totally fine. And there we go. Mark my position. There. Call up the weapons officer. 32 and a half. Yeah. 32 and a half from here. Thirty-two and a half, that's right about there-ish. So this was the target's position right now. Let's measure the distance. There it is. And... Come on, line up. There we go, good enough. One kilometer. That would tell me that the target is sailing at a speed of 10 knots. Huh, interesting. I thought it would be a little bit faster than that. We are taking the next speed reading at 6.5 minutes. That's another 3 minutes 15. This will give us the information... Um, this will give us an updated mark, of course. And it will also tell us the average speed over a time of not 3 minutes 15, but of 6.5 minutes. And the more we open up the angle on bear to the target, the more precise this method gets. So that's nice. We just continue to measure the speed. And we'll get there. Yeah, shadow in front. That's the escort. There is a shadow out there. This ship, I can't quite put my finger on its dimensions. It might be smaller than I thought it was. In any case, I'm debating whether I should turn away from it. How far away am I to their track? A kilometer. That's too little. That's way too little. Turn away. Turn us away. Let's increase our distance to that track a little bit. We're coming up on six minutes. Half a minute and we are taking another measurement. seems normal. Nobody has spotted us. This ship here is armed. There is a gun on the stern. So as long as that is not shooting at us, I think I can be pretty confident that we have not been spotted. Okay. Bearing. There we go. Watch officer and weapons officer, I mean. 43 43 degrees is this way and that puts the ship at this position mark and now let's see if this still lines up I will just take the measurement that we have taken before and move it up and we can see that it almost lines up it's a little bit less but I will chalk that up to a measurement error it's still pretty much 10 knots yeah that also means that average speed over time of six and a half minutes Two kilometers divided by two, of course, because we took the um, three minute fifteen rule two times, so it's ten knots. That's good. That's very good, in fact. The next the tanker and orders. Let me check this out. Ship spotted bearing thirty nine, coming towards us or not? That's the question. Shadow over there. Not necessarily coming towards us right now. 
It's not likely that we have been spotted. We are taking the next measurement at 9 minutes and 45 seconds. one minute away. The warship is making me super nervous. I think it is side on to me right now, which is very weird. And if things become weird, that's when I get worried. Oh well, let's concentrate on our target. Nine minutes have passed. We are now waiting another 45 seconds for the next measurement. And then, after I've taken that final measurement, I will actually once again turn on a parallel course when we get in a position to engage this thing. Come on. Okay, middle mast, targeting that, yeah. position. Weapons officer. That is 64 degrees from this position. 64 puts them right about right about where I expected them to be. 10 knots? It is. We are going with 10 knots. Turn on a parallel course again. Jawohl, Herr Kaloy. Neuer K Neun. Let's get ready to engage. Lower the radio antenna. Oh, wrong button. Lower the radio antenna. Bring back the user. I still need that. To reduce our silhouette here. We will further reduce our silhouette by submerging the deck. It's just about reducing our silhouette. In the past, I've received some comments about, well, if you submerge the decks and you're still going at such a high speed, won't that create a lot of uh, spray? The answer to that is quite simple. We are creating spray at this speed anyway, and plenty of it. The thing is, this game was never made to include this feature that you submerge your deck. So it always, if you look at it from this perspective, it always looks a little bit silly and it always looks like a huge amount of spray is being thrown up. While in reality I would be able to lower this thing so that the water is flowing just around the conning tower. So there wouldn't be too much spray created, not significantly more than before. See all the spray that's created on the stern and such? That's a little bit silly. It's exaggerated. Because the game was never meant to do this. Right, here we go. Can I submerge us a little bit more? I would like to. Get us a little bit lower into the water. I really want only the conning tower to be visible. How far away are we now from their track? Two kilometers. That's good. That's perfectly fine. So I know their speed now. I can stop taking the measurements. Ten knots is... We have verified it. That's good enough. Stop the clock. And I will prepare... Check something. Am I on AOB 90 degrees? Or have I passed it already? Wow, it's difficult to tell with this ship. And this darkness. No, I'm not even close to AOB 90. Yeah. Good. 
that's actually good. I should still be fast enough, and I definitely am, to get ahead of the it will just take a little bit of time. But we are getting there. Since it's night time, I can make use of my steam propeller torpedoes in tubes 2 and 3. That's a good opportunity to use those. I don't have many electric torpedoes for this patrol. I have mostly steam torpedoes. I did make a different selection before the patrol, but somehow the game ignored it and just gave me a very random selection. I even have an electric torpedo for the aft tube, which I usually don't do. Interesting. But yeah, that's the cards that we have been dealt. We are going to play them. Okay. Let me have a look. We are getting there. We are definitely catching up to the target. You can see that in, the, in this view here. We are gaining on it slowly but steadily. I will want to get a little bit ahead of it, but not too much, since there is uh, that escort. I don't want to risk an encounter with that. If they don't change their course, I have all the firing data that I need. I don't even have to set up a perfect 90 degree shot. I even have the distance. No need to measure anything by this point. Maybe just the AOB before we fire, but that's it. And the distance. This is a very nice situation for me to be in, definitely. Okay, let's take a really short break until I'm in uh, my firing position, or until we suddenly get detected and blown to bits. We'll see what happens first. See you in a few moments. Here we are, here we go, in a position to Attack the target. Let me show you. So I have been able to confirm that uh, their course by having a good look at them when their AOB was 90. And what we will do now is we will turn towards them and we will fire our torpedoes. But for that, let's prepare everything. I've already prepared the torpedoes. Tubes 2 and 3 will be fired as a salvo with a 2 degree spread, medium speed, impact pistols, torpedo depth. Three and a half meters should be absolutely fine for this purpose. Let me turn the pace curve to zero and let's set up an AOB of 90 left, 90 ports. There we go, because that will be the AOB when we turn on a new course. Speed 10 knots, that's fine. Range we will have to reduce, let's do it right now. I will take a final look at the map before we fire. Good. Everything should be set up for a quick turn 90 degrees to our right. Yes? Yes. Okay. Turn in. Here we go. Moment of truth. Having a quick look at the map. Distance to target track. That point of shooting will most likely be something along the lines of 1700 maybe. To 1800. Not that it matters too much. But we will dial it in regardless. Oh, we already did. 1700. That's fine. Still turning. Opening the tubes. Okay, turn is stopping right now, slow us down, good, very good, come on, complete the turn, good enough, 
let's have a look. For a 90 degree shot, I would have already had to fire. Didn't. That's fine. I don't need it. I have the solution perfectly dialed in. Now all I need is to confirm the range to target. I'll do that right now. Range to target. 1.8. I'll hold on for a moment and then I'll fire. Okay. Get ready. Confirm. Two degrees spread. Let's reduce that to one and a half. Fire. Turn. Increase speed. Let's get away from here. Things are gonna get uncomfortable very soon. Once I'm turned around, I'm going to flank speed. Actually, we can do that right now. Flank speed ahead. Turn to 230. That will be our escape vector. Moment of truth. Are these torpedoes going to hit their target? I don't see anything on the water. So far nothing. We are now on our escape vector. There we go. One hit, midships. Second one. No second hit. No, only one torpedo hit. The second one must have passed just behind the target. We were a little bit off. This torpedo should have impacted more forward than that. Now, the reaction of the destroyer. Or the escort, what's it doing? We are going to surface now. Oh, that's... Oh, that's lovely. Turn to 60. Yeah, got it. They're shooting star shells. Trying to find us. I've surfaced so that we can use our full speed advantage here. Okay. Yeah, we are now increasing our speed steadily. We'll go back here and take a look behind us what's happening. That thing is surely going down. Even one torpedo should be enough to sink it. Maybe the other torpedo did hit and was a dud. That can't be discounted uh, as a possibility. The other freighter is continuing on its merry way. But where is the escort? There it is. Yeah, it's coming this way. Well, it's coming towards the sinking freighter. It's not coming towards us at the moment, which is excellent news. Absolutely delighted by that. Turn us a little bit um, left. Give us a little left turn. Just so that we can get away from the sinking freighter even faster. I'm pretty sure that that thing is going down. I actually think it's dead in the water. And yeah, explosions are happening. They are in big, big trouble. 
uh, hit a midships like that, that's a death sentence. Most likely. If not, we'll go in again and finish it off. For now, our auto loading, I didn't want that enabled, but okay. Can I still remove this torpedo from the queue? I can. I want to leave one free space so that I can easily swap between a full load of electric torpedoes or a full load of steam torpedoes. If necessary. That's the freighter. Where's the escort? There it is. I can see a shadow in the darkness. Good. Let's take a quick look at our target. I want to have a good look at this thing. See it struggling. Oh, is that? Uh, wait, which flag is that? Is that... New Zealand? No. Oh, they're actually going down. Well, it's really not as big as I thought it is, I think. It's smaller than anticipated. Is this... yeah, this is just a cargo ship, not a tanker. Okay, and it's sinking now. I, you might ask yourself, why did I not shoot a torpedo at the other freighter in front of it? Well, the reason for that is simple. By the time that the torpedo had reached the other freighter, the impact angle would have been so bad that the torpedo would most likely have bounced off. So it really wasn't worth to attempt it. It was a bad idea to concentrate my two torpedoes on this target. And that did pay off. That did pay off quite handsomely. This thing is going down. By the way, what did we actually sink? We sank a medium merchant Type 39 of 3,896 tons. So, in total, that gives us a really nice tonnage for today. A good start to this patrol. A really good start to this patrol. Slow down the boat. Slow down the boat a little bit. We don't need to stress our engines too much. They have endured a lot today. I think I'm far away from what is happening behind me. That I don't need to worry about detection. I think we have gotten away without repercussions here. I'm so confident that I'm gonna tell my navigator to return to our original course. We are once again on our way to our patrol area. And on the way we might just um, be able to load the torpedo from the external reserve here into the boat. Maybe. Maybe we can do that. Or maybe I will wait until I've expended a few more torpedoes. It's pretty crowded in the torpedo room with this much ammunition there. Let's make sure that the torpedo loading is commencing. You are getting in there. Give me another torpedo man and a few sailors in the bare torpedo room. You can start to work on the torpedo reload. Yeah, that's progressing nicely. And we... We will just concentrate on getting away from here. And with that, I think we are ending today's episode. Um, as usual, um, let me know in the comments what you think about it. Would you have done anything differently? Do you think that I have taken a risk that is too great with the escort nearby? I still don't know what kind of escort that was, by the way. No clue. I didn't get a good look at it. But in any case, for today we once again survived an engagement. And we are continuing on our long, long journey. Join me next time when we hopefully arrive in our patrol area without encountering any trouble along the way. Until then, have some really great days and goodbye.